Using our circular flow model, we see that households derive income by making factors of production that they possess available to firms. Firms then use these factors of production to produce goods and services. In return for the use of these factors of production, firms pay households, and this payment we know as income. For most households, income consists of the wages and salaries they receive in return for their labour. Now, what do households do with their income? Yes, we spend most of what we earn buying goods and services. Keynes describes the relationship between income and household consumption like this. The fundamental psychological law upon which we are all entitled to depend with great confidence, both from our knowledge of human nature and from experience, is that men are disposed to increase their consumption as income increases, but not as much as the increase in income. In other words, for most of us, when we get a pay rise or salary increase, we'll spend more. In fact, we'll spend most of that increase, but we won't spend all of it. In terms of our circular flow model, we can now add this spending flow between households and firms, what we know as consumption spending, C. Now, there's a positive correlation between Y and C. Higher income causes higher consumption spending, and vice versa. But it is important to note that this increase in consumption spending is usually less than the increase in income. Most of us won't spend every last cent of an increase in income that comes our way. In other words, if the national household income increases by 100 million rand, consumer spending will also rise, but only by perhaps 80 million rand. So what happens to the other 20 million? Well, for the most part, Households will save this surplus income, and it fits into our circular flow diagram like this, as a flow of savings. So as a general rule in this model, what is not spent is saved. Savings is therefore our first leakage from the spending flow. We've previously used functions to analyse economic behaviour. When we looked at demand and supply, we saw that demand was a function of price, income, the number of buyers, and so on. We'll now create a consumption function to help us better understand our behaviour as consumers. Consumption spending, C, is made up of two types of spending, what we call autonomous consumption and induced consumption. First, what is autonomous consumption? Well, the most useful definition for us is that autonomous means independent. Autonomous consumption refers to any consumption that's independent of our income. But what does that mean? Well, if you think about it, even if a household has no income, there'll still be some basic consumption. The family breadwinner may lose their job, and hence their income, but they still have to spend to survive. They'll have to consume some food, wear some clothing, find some shelter. They might live off their savings or loans, gifts or handouts or social programmes. Autonomous consumption can be regarded as that level of consumption that takes place even if income is zero. In our equation, autonomous consumption is indicated by C bar. Induced consumption is that part of consumption that does depend on income. As we've seen, an increase in income, Y, causes an increase in consumption spending, C. But the increase in consumption spending is less than the rise in income. This pattern, to increase our consumption spending by less than any rise in income, is shown by the letter small c. And we call this our marginal propensity to consume. This is an important part of our individual economic profile, our personality and it plays a key role in the Keynesian model. The value of this marginal propensity is always less than one, because consumption spending increases but by less than income. If the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9, it indicates that for every one rand increase in income, households will increase their spending by 90 cents. So, the consumption function states that consumption spending, C, is made up of autonomous consumption, C bar, plus induced consumption, 
which is our marginal propensity to consume, small c, multiplied by our income, y. We can illustrate this consumption function as a graph. The horizontal axis reflects the level of income, y, and the vertical axis, consumption spending, c. Autonomous consumption, c.